Welcome, welcome, welcome again to another call, another edition of Inspirational Wednesdays. My name is Pastor Al Kennan III, and I want to thank you for taking the time this morning as you're getting ready, as you're starting your day, as you're walking out the door to go to work, to go to exercise, to take the kids to school, to otherwise begin what is going to be a glorious day in the Lord. I want to thank you for joining us for this prayer call. We know you didn't have to do it. We know that you could have been doing anything else so we are honored that you have joined us and we're going to spend the next 50 minutes or so worshiping God through prayer praise and devotion we're going to petition him to intercede not only on our behalf but on the behalf of those persons that we're connected to and we're going to trust by faith that whatever we lay before God during this prayer call God is going to be certain to answer it certain to respond certain to uh really be there uh for us and 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 to show out and show himself Lord God Almighty amen amen let us begin with our opening morning prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, we come to you right now thanking you for yet another chance, another opportunity, another occasion to come before your throne, to make petition to you, and to trust by faith that whatever we petition you for, you're already on the scene, behind the scene, pulling strings, bringing things together, taking things apart so that we see the end result in our lives. That we see that you are a God who loves and cares and a God who does things for the ones he cares about and a God who provides for his children, a God that protects us, a God that makes a way out of no way, a God who is faithful. So, Lord, be with us now for the next 50 minutes or so as we worship you through prayer, praise, and devotion. Give us the words, the thoughts, the compassion, the care, the sympathy, and the empathy needed so that we may glorify you through everything said and done during this time. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. The scriptorial focus for this morning's devotional comes from the Gospel of John, the 21st chapter, the 15th verse. That's John chapter 21, verse 15. I will read from the New International Version of the Scripture. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Thus far, the word of God. The title for this morning's devotional is, Put Our Love Where Our Mouths Are. Put Our Love Where Our Mouths Are. Growing up, we conveyed our thoughts and ideas to other children through sayings. What saying was used when depended entirely on the nature of our then-present conversations. For example, when tensions would rise between two kickball players from opposing teams, one of these players would always draw a straight line in the sand directly between them and declare, if you're that bad, step over this line, I dare you. Or, if we were arguing with another kid and things got personal, there was always an instigator present who would hold out his or her hand and say, the baddest man hit my hand. In both instances, these verbal challenges inferred that physical supremacy could be demonstrated by volitional action. These weren't the only sayings that as kids we shot back and forth at one another. I can remember the nursery rhyme little girls used to chant as they skipped around in a circle. Girls are made of sugar and spice and everything nice. Boys are made of slugs and snails and puppy dog tails. This nursing rhyme was meant to indicate that boys are physically different from girls. It's, it also intended to prove that girls are made of much better materials than, boy, materials than boys. And because they are, girls are all around nicer people than boys are. Now we boys, we typically responded negatively to this by being mean to the girls. 
The irony is that our response usually guaranteed that we got our butts kicked and our egos crushed by these girls. Of all the sayings we had as children, my favorite saying was, put your money where your mouth is. In fact, this saying has stuck with me and followed me into adulthood. As a child, we issued this challenge to anyone who made a claim that seemed suspect. We all know what I'm talking about. There was always one kid who asserted that he or she could do something that the rest of us couldn't do. These kids could allegedly run faster or jump higher than we could. They could allegedly throw a ball further or skip a rock across the top of the water more times than we could. Whatever was at stake, these kids claimed that they could do it better than anyone else. And they just didn't claim that they were better than us either. They made some very audacious claims. Their assertions were so incredible that they defied belief. As such, these claims typically produce the response, put your money where your mouth is. In other words, show and prove, buddy. You're so bad. Show us that you can actually do what you're claiming that you can do. You say you can run faster than anyone else out here. Prove it. You say you can outplay anyone on the basketball court in a game of 21. Then do it. You say you can skip a rock across the water 10 times before it falls in. Here's the rock. We're waiting. Whatever it is that you're supposed to be the best at, we wanted you to prove it to us right then and there. In our scriptorial focus this morning, Jesus challenges Peter. He asserts that the quantitative value of Peter's love for him should clearly be seen in the qualitative action of Peter's discipleship and stewardship. If Peter truly loved Jesus, as he said he did, then Jesus believed that Peter should have no problems caring for his sheep. Every time he interacted with, worked with, cared for, or otherwise engaged in one of Jesus' followers, engaged one of Jesus' followers, Peter's actions should declare his love for God. In other words, Jesus told Peter to put his love where, where his mouth was. Don't just tell Jesus that he loved him, so Jesus his love. He was requiring Peter to care for others as if he was caring for Jesus himself. This is the challenge that the Lord God has laid out before us this morning. Over the past few weeks, God has challenged us. He first asked us how valuable he is to us. He wanted to know the place of prominence and importance that he holds in our lives. Then the Lord asked us what it would take for us to believe. What all must he do before we will locate our faith in him? What hoops must our Heavenly Father jump through before we'll take a chance and believe in him as well as believe him? This morning, the Lord God Almighty challenges us to show and prove. If we claim that we love him so much, then we ought to be able to demonstrate that love. We should be able to put it in action. Our discipleship and stewardship efforts should give our love for the Lord a body. It should take on a form and shape as well as a reason and purpose. God wants us to put our love where our mouths are. In fact, here's another saying we used to use all the time. Either put up or shut up. Either we get to getting and do what we say we're going to do, or we go somewhere and sit down and be quiet. Kill all that talking. Either we're going to be about it or we're going to forget about it. Words alone aren't sufficient for the Lord. A whole lot of people talk a good game. Everyone's talking about what they're going to do for God. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But in the end, no one does anything and God is left holding the back. I recall an old poem I once heard. It went like this. There was a job for everyone to do. Anyone could have done it, and at some point someone did say he was going to do it, but it never got done because no one ever did it. You see, the Lord wants to see love in action. He wants to literally witness it happening right before him. Huh? What? What do you say? How do we put our love for God into action so that he can actually see it? I'm so glad you asked. In Matthew chapter 25, Verses 31 through 46, the Lord God reveals to us how to put our love for him in action. He declares that we show how much we love him by the way we serve others. That's right. 
God to God, love is service. It ain't the acclamation of wealth and material things. It doesn't involve how much money we make and bring home to our significant others. Rather, love is all about how we extend ourselves for the well-being of others. It doesn't assist persons with the expectation that they turn around and assist us in return. Instead, we serve our neighbors simply because we want to be a very present help to them. We want to see them be and operate at their very best. Nothing more, nothing less, period. So, how do we serve others in ways that clearly reveals our love for our Heavenly Father? We love Him by feeding those persons who, for whatever reason, can't feed themselves. We love God when we provide shelter to those individuals who, for whatever reason, don't have homes or shelter. We love the Lord when we close clothe those brothers and sisters who, for whatever reason, need clothing. We love the Creator when we spend time sincerely caring for the sick and the ill. We show that we love the gift giver more than the gifts we receive when we go beyond ourselves and visit with those who are currently in jail or prison. These are the actions that prove to our God that we, His disciples and stewards, truly love Him. When we engage in these activities and others like them, we actually put our love where our mouths are. We show that we're more than hot air and clanging symbols signifying nothing. Rather, we're faith walkers who are about it. As we go through our day and as we move through the next seven days, let's be extremely intentional about our love for our Lord. Let's be as determined to give love as we are about receiving it. Let's let God's light shine in us so that others may feel his love for them. Amen? Amen. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, the time has come for us to stop resting on our laurels. No longer can we think that just because we feel love for you, we're showing you the love you so richly deserve. You require action. You demand intentional effort from us. You expect us to engage in service with a purpose. So we come before you now declaring that we bout that life. We're here to serve you, and we intend to serve you by serving others. We accept your mandate to feed your sheep. You fed us when we couldn't feed ourselves. You care for us when we couldn't take care of ourselves. You did everything we needed for you to do, and you did it because you loved us. You love us. Your love for us compelled you to act on our behalves and in our best interests. Therefore, we stand before you now ready, willing, and able to love you like you loved us. We're going to be a blessing to your sheep this day, and we're going to reveal just how wonderful and awesome you really are by being a wonderful and awesome blessing to someone around us. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. We have just had our morning devotional. It's our prayer that as you go through this day, God would bless you tremendously to be a blessing for someone else, that God would uh, it's, will well up in you a desire to demonstrate your love for him by loving someone else. You know, it doesn't take much for us to love someone else. In fact, the things that Jesus list, listed are very easy things for us to do. Think about this. All of us, we sit down at a table, we eat, and nine times out of ten, we throw away leftover food. We have clothes in our closets that we haven't worn in years. Some of us have so much time on our hands that it would not hurt for us to just stop by to say hello to someone just to check on them, see how they're doing. Some of us have the ability, the gift to help, the ability to help others, and what blessing would it be to, to help someone who's sick, under the weather, ill, or currently unable to care for themselves completely? Now, I'm not saying that you need to become a full-time home care nurse, but you know, go by sometimes. Say, hey, can I drive you to the grocery store? Or do you need me to get this for you? Or well, I just came by just to see if I could help you with something. See, that's the love God is requiring us to, sh to demonstrate. It's the love that cares for the person because we love God. 
It's not a love that's trying to buy our way into heaven. It's not a love that's trying to, quote unquote, earn God's blessings. It's a love that says, because you love me so much, God, and because I in turn love you so much, there's no way I can keep this love that the two of us are have with have between one another to our to myself. I have to share this love with someone else. I have to let someone else experience the very love that you have given me. And in that in the course of showing, demonstrating, revealing, extending that kind of love to someone else, we showed to that person or to other people around that you are love, God. We share that God is real, that his love is real, and that he really wants to care for, provide for, protect, nurture, develop, edify, equip, encourage, do all these wonderful things for us by what we do through others. You know, there are plenty of people who are sitting around asking God, God, do you use this? I don't see you. Where are you? And here we are sitting around saying, God, I'm waiting to be used. Well, why don't we let God connect us who want to be used with the people who are waiting to see God so that together there'll be a synergy and that God's love will be revealed and that these people may come to know God through the free pardon of their sins. Why don't we do that? Just a thought. Amen. Amen. We have come to that portion of our call, which is the prayer section of our call. You know, I call this the best part of our call because guess what? I get to hear from all of us. I get to hear what it is. Um, and we all get to hear what it is you want God to uh, move on your behalf. And we get a chance to interact with each other. It's one thing for me just to sit here and just talk, 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 talk. It's another thing to us to start interacting with each other. And, you know, we've said it before. This is a good place for you to come and interact with us and to share your prayer concerns. Not because there's anything great about us inside of ourselves, but mainly because we serve such a great God who did not think it robbery to get off the throne this morning and to come down and to tabernacle with us during this call. I have found from listening to the prayer requests and then the subsequent praise reports that God is in our midst. He's listening. And not only is he listening, but he's so quick to go into action on our behalf. He's so quick to do whatever it is that we need him to do that before we really have a chance to really digest and understand completely what the prayer request is, someone is coming back to us to give us a praise report for what God has done. And so I'm saying that to say to you, this is good fertile spiritual ground. This is the place where if you want to plant a seed through prayer, plant it because our God is here. He's listening. He's receiving it. And he's growing these seeds, not just into seedlings, seedlings, but into uh, trees, bushes, hedges that are producing fruit. So with that said, we're going to jump into our call. If you have a prayer request, a praise report, or a prayer that you would like for us to uh, share with you, to pray for you, we want you to jump in, give us your name, where you're calling from, and then we'll go from there. If you are afraid of what someone may think, uh, or afraid that someone may recognize who you are if you give your name. Just tell us where you're calling from and what's on your heart and mind. And we'll accept your prayer request, your praise report, or your prayer. Remember, the Lord, the Lord says, you have not because you ask not. You receive not because you seek not. The door is never open to you because you never knock. What God is saying, we have to take the initial step to at least present our concerns to him. That's all he's asking. He just wants us to present our prayer request to him. And then he'll take it from there. But if you don't present it, he can't do anything. Now that's not to say God doesn't know what you're feeling, what you're going through, what you're, what, what you're dealing with. No, what that is saying is God is requiring us to take an act of faith, a step of faith, to step out and trust that if we share with him what it is we need for him to do, that he will in turn do it 
in such a way that we have such a wonderful, awesome, marvelous, magnificent testimony for all he's done in our lives. So I'm going to get out of the way now. We're going to open up the floor for our, for our prayer um, section of our call. If you have a prayer, prayer request, praise report, or prayer that you would like for us to pray with you, please give us your name and where you're calling from. Good morning, it's Nicole from Charlotte. Hey, good morning, Nicole from Charlotte. How you doing?